Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera semua koci Okay, untuk perjumpaan kali ini kita akan menerangkan tentang modul yang pertama iaitu uh, pembelajaran abad ke-21 iaitu cara macam mana student nak mengambil nota kuliah dengan berkesan okay, dengan menggunakan PAK21 lah okay, kaedah yang kita akan terangkan uh, kali ini ialah tentang uh, kaedah Cornell Note Stacking okay, so kita tengok notes kat sini dulu ok Ok, Cornell Note Staking ni Ok, sebenarnya tujuan dia kalau kita tengok dekat sini Dia kata untuk menghindarkan kelupaan Ok, sebab kebanyakan uh, student atau koci Dia hanya mendengar dalam tempoh satu jam Ok, selepas tu dia akan lupa 50% Dan selepas dua hari pula dia akan lupa 70% Ok, so dengan adanya Cornell Note Staking ini Ok, so kita boleh uh, uh, apa ni, Mengatasilah masalah kelupaan ini Ok Alright, uh, prosedur macam mana kita nak menyediakan Cornell uh, Note Staking ni Cara dia ialah uh, kita kena uh, membuat dua lajur Kita bahagikan kertas kepada dua lajur Di mana lajur yang pertama adalah uh, kita kata sebagai tajuk okay? uh, Tajuk utama lah, tajuk besar dia okay? uh, Lajur yang kedua adalah isi kepada tajuk yang uh, dalam lajur pertama tadi Okay Alright, kita tengok dia punya uh, contoh nah. Contoh macam mana Cornell Note Staking ni dilakukan Okay, so yang di atas ni kalau kita tengok dia tajuklah topik Okay, contohnya topik 3, topik 4, topik 5 Jadi kita boleh masukkan di sini lah Okay, and then, and then nah, name, nama, class, period, date Okay, and then uh, dibahagikan kepada dua lah Yang ni dikatakan laju pertama, main ideas Ataupun uh, tajuk utama dalam satu-satu topik tu Okay, notes adalah uh, isi kandungan kepada tajuk di laju pertama ni Okay, then uh, selepas habis semua kita ambil nota Kita akan buat summary di sini Okay, okay untuk lebih jelas lagi Cuba kita lihat klip video daripada YouTube ni Okay, sekejap ya In way to listen and take notes This method I am going to teach you today is really, really going to help you. Um, and I know this because I use this method myself and I've found it has really, really helped me uh, when I was in university, uh, during meetings, during all sorts of different situations. This method really works. Um, so first, before I teach you about the method, I want you to think about yourself. And I want you to think about when do you take notes? Okay, so when do you listen and when do you take notes? So some of you might think uh, maybe you're in university, maybe you're in college, maybe you're in high school and you have to listen to your teacher talk and you have to take notes to help you remember what they are saying. Um, maybe you've graduated and you're working in a business and you have meetings and or presentations and you also need to take notes. So um, this method will work for whether you're working or you're studying. Um, maybe you're taking the IELTS or the TOEFL. Um, this can also help you on the TOEFL test in terms of improving your listening and taking notes. So how do you take notes? Okay, I know some students, they watch their professor or their teacher talk and they use their computer and they just type everything their professor or teacher says. Is this something you do? Maybe you write your notes and you write every single thing your professor says down on a piece of paper or an anything um, somebody says. Well, there are a couple of problems with these methods um, and I'm going to explain to you some of the problems now. So for people who like to take notes by computer, uh, there are some advantages of this. You're able to type really quickly and you're able to get a lot of what you hear down on your computer and it's easy to save. But the problem with this is it's a type of passive listening. So a lot of the times you're not actually using your brain to interpret what you're listening to and you're not um, actively listening. You're just copying word for word. You're not actually doing anything 
active with the material you're listening to. Um, so working with a computer, uh, and I've seen this in my university, a lot of students also end up going on Facebook during the le lesson or lecture. So a lot of the times they get very distracted when they should be listening, they're actually not. So for me personally, and I think for a lot of people, using a computer to take notes is not the best method. Um, again, for some people it might work, but for a lot of people it doesn't. A lot of the times it's actually better to take notes by hand. And the reason is when you take notes by hand, you have to think about what you're writing because writing takes a, a bit longer than typing. So you're organizing the material Therefore, it's more of an active way to listen, okay? And they've done psychology studies on this, and they do find that taking your notes by hand is often better than taking notes by a computer. So, today I'm going to teach you a way to take notes by hand using what is called the Cornell Method. This method was developed at Cornell University, and a lot of universities actually um, encourage students to use this method because it is very good. So what is the Cornell method? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked. So I have here an example of how you would organize your paper. Imagine this is your paper that you take your notes on. What you can do is you can make a box just like this, where you have a box where you write the title and the date of the lesson, um, you have a square or a rectangle here, you have a rectangle here, and you have a rectangle at the bottom. Okay, so in total you have one, two, three, four. Four different rectangles. Now what do you do? So I already said you write the title here and the date here. In this column, you're going to write the main idea or the keyword a professor is using. Now, if this is confusing, that's okay, because I will show you an example of a finished um, a note, okay? But for now, just to explain, in this column, we're going to write any big, important words, okay? So if you're learning about, um, you know, gravity, you might write the word gravity here, okay? Um, you can also write questions here. What is gravity? Um, or you can write the main idea. So this is just almost um, like the big ideas that you're listening to. This is where we write the smaller ideas, the details. So if you're learning about history or um, you know something like that, you can write the dates here. Okay, maybe you're learning about Shakespeare, so you might write you know Shakespeare here and when he was born, when he died. You can write details, details about what you're learning. Definitions. If uh, you're learning a new word, you can write the meaning here. Uh, if you're taking a science class, you can write your formulas here. Uh, you can write examples here. Uh, maybe if they're explaining, um, you know, uh, something about science and something about, you know, planets, you can write an example here about Mercury. Um, and you can also draw pictures here. A lot of students, they don't put pictures in their notes, but it actually is a great idea to help with understanding and to also help you remember uh, what, you're, what you're learning. So here you write the big ideas or the keywords. Here is the detail. And finally at the bottom, after you know, you've gone through the, the notes, so while you're listening to your professor or your teacher, you're writing here and here. And then once the class is over, you think about what you learned, and you look. You look here, you look here, and then you can write maybe four or five things that you learned today. Just by thinking about that at the end of each class will really, really help you to remember um, you know, the material. So this is a very active way to take notes because you're organizing things, you're using a lot of brain power, which is good, and you're going to remember a lot more than if you just type up everything the professor says on the computer, or if you just write everything the professor says on the computer. The other great thing about this method is it's so easy when you're studying for a test or an exam 
you can find ideas very quickly. So if uh, you want to go back to about gravity, you can look for, okay, where's gravity? Oh, here's gravity. And then you can read up on some of the details about gravity. Uh, so it's very, very good for organizing your notes, which will help you in terms of your test. Okay, so itu antara uh, apa ni? Pengkasan daripada uh, video YouTube tadi yang berkenaan dengan Cornell method. Okay, so kita boleh cuba buat. Okay, kita just bahagikan uh, kertas piece of paper. Okay, kepada uh, dua laju ataupun dua bahagian. Okay, so katakanlah ini kita punya kertas. Okay, okay, so kita bahagikan kepada dua. Okay, so yang di bawah ni kita boleh letak uh, summary. Okay, okay, di bawah ni kita letak summary. Okay, so yang di atas ni uh, kita bahagikan kepada uh, dua. Iaitu yang pertama kita masukkan uh, main idea tadi. Okay, main idea. Ataupun kita kata tajuk utamalah. Okay, okay, di dalam uh, di sebelah laju yang kedua kita boleh masukkan content dia lah. Okay, content kepada uh, main idea tadi. Okay, so uh, katakanlah uh, dalam subjek account contohnya. Okay, chapter kita boleh letak di atas. Contohnya kita letak chapter uh, chapter 2. Okay, basic accounting concept. So, basic accounting concept. Okay, so main idea. Okay, maksudnya isi utama kepada tajuk uh, basic accounting concept. Okay, so main idea ataupun isi utama kita tahu dalam basic accounting concept kita ada banyak konsep. So, kita boleh list down. Okay, contohnya kita list down yang pertama historical cost. Okay, historical historical cost concept. Okay, second kita boleh letak uh, apa lagi ya? Uh, kita boleh letak monetary measurement. Okay, monetary measurement. Okay, then third kita boleh letak konsep contohnya katakanlah um, economic entity. Economic entity. Alright. Okay. So, this is the main idea lah. Maksudnya main idea untuk bahagian laju yang pertama. Okay, so untuk laju yang kedua kita boleh masukkan content ataupun apa penerangan atau isi tentang historical cost. Okay, so kita boleh masukkanlah nota ni. Kita boleh tulislah apa yang kita uh, dengar daripada yang pensyarah uh, bagi notes tadi tu lah. Okay, so kita boleh senaraikan dalam bentuk point pun tak apa. Itu content dia lah. Content maksudnya content kepada main idea tadi. Okay, uh, yang tajuk-tajuk konsep tadi. Uh, monetary measurement pun sama juga. Kita boleh masukkanlah apa maksud monetary measurement ni, monetary measurement ni. Okay, so kita boleh masukkan di kolom atau laju content. Economy entity pun sama juga. Kita boleh masukkan apa maksud economy entity di dalam uh, laju yang kedua ataupun di bahagian content. Okay, uh, so itu yang dikatakan Cornell note taking ni. Maksudnya kita bahagikan kepada dua laju. Okay, kita ada main idea dan di sebelah tu adalah content. Okay, kemudian at last kita boleh uh, buat summary. Okay, summary ni uh, maksudnya ringkasan kepada apa yang kita dah uh, tulis dalam uh, kita punya jadual tadi lah. Okay, Cornell uh, notes tadi. Okay, summary contohnya kita boleh kata okay, uh, so hari ni kita dah belajar uh, 12 konsep. Okay, 12 konsep dalam uh, accounting. So, kita boleh tulis kat situ 12 konsep. Okay, uh, accounting konsep. Kita uh, accounting konsep. Okay, so ini adalah summary kepada notes yang kita dah ambil tadi. Yang kita dah bahagi kepada dua laju tadi. Uh, so, ini uh, inilah contoh method yang diperkenalkan uh, uh, untuk modul yang pertama ni iaitu Cornell uh, Note Staking. Okay, untuk mengelakkan uh, kelupaan lah. Okay, sebab tujuan dia tadi uh, kita nak elakkan daripada uh, pelajar lupa. Okay, so better kena buat uh, macam ni lah untuk, untuk uh, mengambil nota. Okay, lebih uh, efektif lah. Okay, dan boleh mengelakkan uh, kelupaan tadi lah dapat mengurangkan peratusan kelupaan tadi. Okay, sebab kita boleh rujuk balik kepada kita punya uh, notes, uh, Cornell notes yang kita ambil tadi. Okay, so ini adalah contoh macam mana... Uh, uh, menggunakan kaedah Cornell Not Staking tadi. Okay, iaitu di bawah pembelajaran abad ke-21. Okay, so itu saja untuk um, 
Modul yang pertama ni iaitu just nak memperkenalkan cara mengambil nota kuliah okay, dengan uh, menggunakan uh, kaedah pembelajaran abad ke-21, PAK21 iaitu menggunakan kaedah uh, Cornell Note Staking Method. Okey, so itu saja untuk perjumpaan ataupun untuk uh, modul kali ini. So kita akan bertemu lagi di pertemuan yang berikutnya. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Terima kasih.